Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Negro Demonization, Wikipedia reply. Notice, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. This video is made in good faith for learning and reference purposes only. Remember, the truth is like an awful testing medicine, but the patient still needs it. And to our donors, we say thank you. Remember, you can support us at www.paypal.me forward slash our renaissance and patreon.com forward slash our renaissance. So, have you been watching all our videos and following the comments? Do you remember our reply on Wikipedia information and how it does not constitute a comprehensive research? Do you remember our last reply to a particular user who was hell-bent on Wikipedia information? The user still did not understand what we meant by either doctored research or incomplete research or research that does not really reflect the outcome. So we are again issuing a final reply to the user showing where Wikipedia entry differs from historical records so that he will understand what we are talking about. Here is one of the user's comments on our last video concerning Sierra Leone and the entry on Wikipedia and how it differed from historical records. So the user said, what you are showing the people is only part of the article and your deceitfulness. And I hope that those in the comments that are cheering you on do their own research and see that you are misguiding the people. That article on Wikipedia has all of those dates and more. In 1787, the British Crown founded a settlement in Sierra Leone in what was called the Province of Freedom. You can pause the video and read them out yourself, but ultimately the user said we were lying. Now, we wouldn't know if they edited it and added it after the fact. Above all, their explanation is totally different from what the other records are showing. But we are going to also show you more examples of what we are talking about. You can also see where the user went on to show us who he really is by writing that please don't try to insult my intelligence. I am watching you. Warning. Careful. You have two more strikes so this should tell you at least that the user has something to do with the establishment so but let us show you other of his comments so the user went on to say the renaissance it is you that are stating that the topic on sierra leone on wikipedia did not mention 1787 and what happened during those times you are showing what you want people to see try to prove me wrong lol that is deceitful and misguiding of you you are proving what some people say about nigerians but i know not all are scammers and really need a chance in doing honest business but i will start with sierra leone next year because they are more united and really need help and infrastructure development i will keep my distance from nigerians because from what i have seen here you will lack vision solutions and are still divided amongst yourselves and can't be trusted now remember this user has told us that he is not fulani he has also made comments that suggest that he is defending the fulani including telling us that a lot of fulanis were abducted and sold as slaves during the slave trade but you will notice that he has never told us who it was that captured and sold them this is one thing he has never done but let us still move forward and here again he goes on to say for anyone that needs proof of his folly, look for yourselves, click the link and scroll down to history and subtitle is Early Colonies. So you can pause the video and read the entire thing. And here you see the same user even questioning the likes of Martin Luther King Jr. and of course Malcolm X and again referencing Wikipedia because we're going to show you what they do with it so that you understand their game very well. So he says MLK, that's Martin Luther King Jr., was referring to a people he was taught by his colonizer that they existed, just like you was taught they existed, 
and he believed them without searching for the truth because MLK was just a civil rights leader. He did not know they were just African people from the continent that look like him. You and me that was captured and sold, nothing else. So you see that the, the, the guy, all he understands is Wikipedia because they control it so what they do is they go there and put in what they want people to believe which we are going to show you in this video that that's what they are doing and we will see where he will run to remember he has still not told us who it was that captured and sold the Fulanese because he has been saying oh a lot of them were captured and sold but he still has not told us who it was that captured and sold them all he will do is to dance around look for points to digress but what they do is when you catch them in a point that they have no escape route they will start looking for places to divert to just keep watching or they don't battle intellectually the next thing is he will threaten banning the channel or going to youtube that's all they know they can't battle intellectually at all and here he provides us with what he calls two links with the same claims of the enslavement of fulani people and 6000 bc origin in this video they are at number seven and in this one it is at two minutes and 50 seconds so he has two youtube videos alleging or claiming that the fulanese were also sued remember he has still not told us by who this is the key question he hasn't answered normally they will run away from that because for anyone to be able to capture another and sell him that person must have the capacity to do so and that is where we wait for them let us see what they are going to say and here again you see another of his threats he says the renaissance why are you repeating yourself do you want to lose your youtube channel now this is because you know normally what they do is a lie told often enough begins to look like true so when you repeat something when they refuse to listen or believe what you're saying and you try to buttress your point they think you are doing what they do they think you want to repeat it often enough so that it starts looking like the truth Whereas you are telling them the truth, which should have been understood at first time, first principle, first instance. Now here again, you will see or get an idea of who he really is. He says the renaissance, I already told they are watching you, but you keep bringing up governments in your comments, not wise at all. Yes, we know, but you need to, from his tone, you will know who he is and why he's um, following us certainly they will have their plans to harm us but remember they've harmed so many people killed so many people but as usual what do they benefit remember if this person had interest in africa had interest in liberty of negroes had interest in freedom humanity to others love of mankind there is no way he will be attacking us the way he's doing there is no way he will be more interested in telling us that the fulanese we are sold rather than telling us who sold them. Remember, these things come from believing that your forefathers could have been so dumb and stupid to have sold their siblings, their children. In fact, in some places, they wrote that sons sold their fathers, which makes it look like the Negroes were so stupid like cattle that you can come and place them and sell them and they just carry them and go like that, which you know is a lie that has been told often enough that has started looking like true when it is not. That is why these people like this will stand to say, hey, yes, it is true. You people sold yourselves or uh, our people sold their people. You know, when somebody accepts the label of being stupid, which is what many people are trying to insinuate by saying that. But let us still look at all some of his comments. At least we all get it clear that he has some relationship with the authorities. Here is the Wikipedia entry for Sierra Leone where he feels that 1787 was mentioned. Now we have no idea whether they added it after the fact or not. So we are going to use another example to show that what we are saying is correct and he knows it is correct anyway. So and here you see the last time the article was edited it was in, on 3rd September 2018. Whichever way, we have numerous cases, but we're going to use one or two examples to show him that Wikipedia entries are not reliable enough when compared with historical records. Now, here is an entry for the Nigerian army in Wikipedia. 
and it tells us that the army was founded in 1960. So North founded 1960. So let us show you how this differs from historical records. So now you see the army which according to Wikipedia was founded in 1960 celebrated 150th anniversary in 2013. So what kind of mathematics did they use? So you see what we're telling you. So if you were to research and base your research on Wikipedia, you will be deceived. See, see the thing, we're going to still show you why and how. Now, according to the same army Wikipedia is telling us was formed in 1960, their history dates back to 1863. So you see where the discrepancies are coming. Now, remember, although this is off the topic, this was the same army that was used to capture and sell slaves. It was just renamed and given uniforms. So, if you were to go to their website now, you will discover that this historical entry may no longer be there. Because now people are asking, how come you are older than the country? So, for you to understand what happens when they hear or see the truth. So, again, remember, our whole purpose is for the humanity to others, to show love to each other, to be human beings to ourselves because nobody benefits from the suffering of others. It doesn't benefit anybody. And we hope as you listen to this, you'll be able to show humanity to everyone else, which is contrary to what this our user is looking at and what he is saying. All he is saying is how so and so people were also sold, but he has refused to also tell us who it was that sold them. But at least this was the army that was doing the selling and we know who owned it if you were to do basic research so you see wikipedia told us that it was founded in 1960 but the uh, website is telling us their history dates back to 1863 which corresponds with their 150th anniversary in 2013 so you see that wikipedia cannot be right it's just because the people that put it there knew that it is the lie they want to sell they want to send out that's why they have it as 1960 Again, is another entry. This time, the Wikipedia entry for Biafra. It tells us that although it puts a notice that the article may be unbalanced towards certain viewpoints, as at March 2015, the neutrality of this article is disputed as at March 2015. The article's factual accuracy is disputed as of July 2015. The article needs additional citations for verification as of July 2015. Now remember, you might think that if you provided additional citations and references, they will change what they have written here. This is not true. So you see where it tells us that Biafra, officially the Republic of Biafra, was a secessionist state in West Africa which existed from 30th May 1967 to January 1970. It was made up of the states in the eastern region of Nigeria. Notice what it said. It existed from 30th May 1967 to January 1970. So we are going to show you that Wikipedia is just a bunch of liars putting what they want there we have shown you the one for nigerian army we are going to show you the one for this as well so it goes on to tell us that its inhabitants were mostly Igbos who led the secession due to economic ethnic cultural and religious tensions among the various people of nigeria other ethnic groups that were present were the Efik, ibibio anang Ejegam, Ekat, Ebino, and Ejo, among others. Now remember, for the avoidance of doubt, Igbos originally meant all the slaves from the Bight of Benin and Biafra because the Negroes were different people. So these people listed here are Negroes. The reason they are delineating them is just divide and conquer. But this is not the subject of our topic here. Our topic here is to establish whether or not Wikipedia is correct with what it's saying about Biafra and the dates. Remember, time is everything. Time. So we're going to show you again. We have shown you the army. We have shown you this. And we're going to show you a thousand and one others. But that's what they do with it. On the etymology, it claims that the country took its name from the Bight of Biafra, the stretch of water to its south at the east end of the Gulf of Guinea. Little is known about the literal meaning of the word Biafra. The word Biafra most likely derives from the subgroup Biafra or Biafada of the tender ethnic group who reside primarily in Guinea-Bissau. Manuel Alves 1526-1583 
a Portuguese Jesuit educator in his work Ethiopia Minor and Geographical Account of the Province of Sierra Leone, writes about the Biafra hidden in chapter 13 of the same book. You see how they have made it look like, oh, this is what we wrote. This is where it's all ended. Now we're going to show you because they know all this, but because they want, this is what they want people to believe. But let us still move forward with the reason we captured it down is so that they don't go and change it and tell you that oh they also wrote it and we didn't mention it he claims it took its name from the bite of biafra now the bite bite just means gulf it means coast so there must be a place where you have biafra to have the bite of it but without mincing words or putting words in their mouth and this wikipedia st stuff let us move forward Note that Wikipedia is telling us that Biafra was established on 30th May 1967. So I will show you how the lies crumble the moment you do basic research. So here is their entry on a coup they allegedly claim is what caused the establishment of Biafra in 1967. Remember, our reason for capturing these other details that we don't need is so that they don't go and edit some places and tell you that we only selected some areas that those things were there. So because we're going to just show you what they are doing with it. But now, let us reference Atlas Geographers or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa, containing what was whatever, volume 4, and published 1714. Note the date, 1714. You see the following. Biafra or Biafra Kingdom. Depa bounds it on the west with Benin, that's the ancient Benin Kingdom with some mountains on the east that's the cameroon mountains which separated from midra and extends it southward to the fourth degree of north latitude lois observed that some geographers give this name to all the country which is bounded on the east by the lake and river of niger on the north by the kingdoms of Borono and Zamfara in Negroland and on the west by that of Benin and the Gulf of St. Thomas. So you see what Wikipedia is telling us was created in 1967 was actually in a book published in 1714. So you see that that's our uh, user who is saying all these things about Wikipedia knows what he's talking about because they use it to deceive people what they do is whatever they want people to believe they'll go and put it in there if you doubt what we're saying just go there anything you're very sure of but they don't like go and put it in there and, and see if they will allow you to publish it that will tell you what they are doing so you see that at least this shows you what we're saying we're going to show you more on this same issue so you understand that they are just a bunch of liars and you see where they wrote lower ethiopia on top he's gonna latch on to that now and tell you that this biafra is not the same as the one remember we told you they create duplicate states to confuse the next generation you know how they have the ancient kingdom of benin and they now have state of benin they now have the ancient ethiopia and they now have ethiopia modern day ethiopia which is totally different from the original ethiopia so let us quickly reference atlas antiquos 12 maps of the ancient worlds for schools and colleges by dr henrich kaipath and it was published in 1876 and there we see the following so the map from that book shows us that the area was called ethiopia at that time this is as at 1876 so you can see the delta of the niger right there also, let us reference a new universal history of the religious rites, ceremonies and customs of the whole world. And you can pause the video and look at the title yourself. And it was by, written by William Hodd, DD, and it was published in 1811. We see the following. The natives of Biafra offer up all they have, even their most darling infants, to the devil and they are extremely addicted to the study and practice of the black art and all magical incantations flattering themselves that by those mysterious operations they can influence the elements and all the products of nature when we talk here of the devil we do not mean the evil spirit which our christian divines treat of but a thing a being a spirit only which we are at a loss to define 
or give any adequate idea of but in all probability it may be the sole object of some people's worship and frequently it is no more than a chimera of their priest's invention or a strong impulse or a delusion of their own disordered imagination so our interest here is that the natives of biafra at all this is as at 1811 this is, was their religion and the devil they are talking about is not the devil of the christians but a spirit they couldn't define but wikipedia is telling us that the biafra was created in 1967 so you see why the user obviously you know he's uh, he has ties with the establishment you see why he keeps running to wikipedia because what they do is to put in what they want you to believe knowing that you are not going to go check it that's just what it is so but let us still move forward we will show him enough again from the same book it shows us where it is it says benin a kingdom of africa bounded on the west by dahomey and the atlantic on the north by biafra on the east by parts unknown and on the south by luango it begins in the first or whatever latitude but our interest is that it tells you that it is very close to benin the ancient benin kingdom remember the other response we gave to our african-american brother who was um talking about state of benin so this shows you where Biafra was. So you understand what is going on and what they do with Wikipedia and why the user, if you notice from his speech, his comments, if something happened to us tomorrow, you obviously know that he has it in the works anyway. So, but at least you, we get the truth out to you first and you can work on it yourself before that time. Meanwhile, you have seen that as at 1811, as at 1714, Biafra was there. So let us also reference the Cyclopedia or Universal Dictionary of the Arts, Sciences and Literature by Abraham Rees, DD, whatever, Eminent Professional Gentleman, Volume 4, and it was published in 1819. And there we see the following Biafra or Biafra in geography, a populous and powerful kingdom of Africa, situate west of Midra and east and southeast of Benin from which it is separated by a chain of mountains extending beyond the fourth latitude of north latitude to the coast of the Gulf of Guinea. It has a capital of the same name and the bay on its coast is called the Bight of Biafra. You see how Wikipedia turned it to, it got its name from the Bight of Biafra rather than the fact that it was an ancient kingdom. So you see, it says the natives of this country, the interior of which is little known, are idolaters and much addicted to magic they are said to be zealous in their worship and to sacrifice their children to the devil biafra is also a small district of africa extending along the sea coast south southeast of the river gambia over against the islands of bisagos or whatever it is but our interest is the fact that wikipedia is saying it was formed in 1967 Meanwhile, it existed even long before we know today, as at 1714, at least, for the geography books to contain it means it was there. So, let us still move forward. Let us also reference a practical system of modern geography or a view of the present state of the world, written by J. Olney and it was published in 1845 and there we see the following. Lower Guinea from the highlighted portion Lower Guinea comprises Biafra, Luango, Congo, Angola, and Benguela. It is an extensive, fertile, and populous country. The natives are rude and barbarous and extremely stupid. It abounds in wild animals, venomous serpents, etc. So further down, it still says Biafra borders on the Gulf of Biafra and is almost wholly unknown. Its capital is Biafra. So, we see again that a book of 1845 or whatever still has Biafra in it. Let us also reference a geographical survey of Africa by James McQueen, expire and published in 1840. We see the following. The positions of these countries are sufficiently ascertained. For Sultan Belo, that is the Sultan of the Fulani, gives us the position of Ataga or Atagara, the Ida of Laird. A great province which the former states reaches to the sea where the ships of Christians come to trade. East of this, or as he says, to the right, lies the province of Nafra, 
or as it is better known to Europeans by the name of Biafra. So if you can read between the lines, you can know that most people in Africa would say right or left rather than east or west. So you notice how they reported it there as well, that this is north, this is south, but as Sultan Belo will tell them to the right will be Biafra, whatever side they are facing, that's not our interest. But you see that in these old books, Biafra was well established. So when you see people fighting over it today, don't say it is the Negroes or Africans because they are stupid. It's just that the slave master is using those they still use to be killing others. That's just what is happening. It's not something that people cannot talk over and live in peace. No, the problem is there is a group that peace is like an allergy. It's like they are allergic to peace. They like violence. They like terror. They like bloodshed. When they see Negroes killed, they have joy that's their where their joy comes from they enjoy it you will see this our brother now when he sees all that we have provided instead of either throwing in the towel you will see that he would have gone to oil his um whatever instruments he has to see what he's gonna do to us because if you looked at his comments and posts you would have no doubt that he has some establishment links and they have some other plans for us known or unknown but they forget that there is a creator of heaven and earth and they are not him but let us still move forward let us reference a compendious and complete system of modern geography by jedediah moss and it was published in 1814 we see the following so from just above the highlighted portion luango we know not how far this country reaches to the north biafra is between it and benin and then further down the last two lines before the red line it says biafra is said to be a powerful and populous kingdom bounded northwest on benin it has a capital of the same name the natives are idolaters so you see the same thing we're talking about at least you see that all the old books have biafra in them but wikipedia is telling us that it was created in 1967 so imagine somebody who was researching at least let's say someone who says i want to be objective with this whole thing let me look at wikipedia to know what to do i want to stand by the truth and the person goes to wikipedia only to see that Biafra was created in 1967, whereas it existed long before Nigeria was even conceived. So, but let us still move forward. So, if we reference New Gazetteer of the Eastern Continent or a Geographical Dictionary in Europe, Asia and Africa by Jedidiah Moss and it was published in 1808, we see the following. Biafra or Biafra, a populous and powerful kingdom of Africa, situate west of Midra and east and southeast of Benin, from which it is separated by a chain of mountains. Let us also reference the New American Cyclopedia, a popular dictionary of general knowledge, edited by George Ripley and Charles A. Dana, Volume 3, and published in 1857. We see the following. Biafra, a kingdom in the western part of Africa on the bay or bight of the same name in Upper Guinea between the kingdom of Huari and the river Gabon. Again, we have seen that Biafra existed long before 1967 that Wikipedia is telling us so you understand what they are doing. Let us also reference the modern path of an universal history from the earliest account of time compiled from original writers by the authors of the ancient part volume 16 and it was published in 1760 we see the following the kingdom of biafra or biafra this kingdom situated on the east of benin on the west of and divided by a chain of mountains from midra extends on the south to the fourth degree of north latitude the natives are the most addicted of all negroes to and infatuated with magic, imagining themselves capable of causing rain, thunder and lightning and therefore worship with great zeal and sacrifice their children to the devil. So let us also reference Molly Ashton, A Story of the Sea by James Grant in three volumes, volume 1 and published in 1876. We see the following. From the highlighted portions, 
There, while engaged in the stupid and monotonous task of daily bathing old muskets, nails and buttons, powder, rum and tobacco for palm oil, cam wood, ivory, lion skins and gorgeous feathers, bathing, cajoling and often browbeating the hideous and barbarous savages of Igbo and Biafra for our house in Liverpool. The hope of being reunited to you alone sustained and inspired me. But our interest here is Igbo and Biafra. So now remember, Igbo is just the award for every slave they bought from the Bight of Benin and Biafra. Actually, it is a synonym for Negro. All these other small, small ethnic groups that they are using now to change it is just to create a divide and conquer. So they give people different identities to make them smaller the way the negroes were and then conquer them that's all they are doing they are still working on it but our interest is to show you that looking at wikipedia is the lazy man's research approach you have to dig deep into the archives to see what they are telling you if it is about contemporary issues that's fine but when it comes to history you just have to do your research you see how our brother will try to explain things to him he refused to understand it now let us see where he's gonna run to because don't be surprised what he's gonna come up with. Let us also reference William and Louisa Anderson, a record of their life and work in Jamaica and Old Calabar by William Merwick and it was published in 1897 and we see the following. At Creek Town on the afternoon of the Lord's Day 16th October 1853 Mr. Goldie publicly baptized in the king's yard a young man named Essien Essien Obabio, who became the first native teacher and afterwards pastor and is now the father of the missionary presbytery of Biafra and one of the few links connecting heathen and Christian Calabar. He was what is called half free, that is to say a slave born in the country who is entitled to some privileges which are not possessed by the, by the slaves introduced from another country. So our interest is just the Presbytery of Biafra here. We shall explain to you when the slave master is talking about slaves and the origin of things like the Osus and all those so alleged killing of twins, we shall show you where they concocted them from. Those are lies. But let us move forward. There was nothing like Osu in Igbo land, it's not their culture, the Christians concocted it and the so-called Osus are actually the priests of the creator of heaven and earth at that time. So what the slave masters did was to accuse them of being behind the slave raids which turned the people against them and that is how they came about that thing. If you check, there is no history book that predates 1950 that contains such a thing. It was never in the culture of the Igbos. And remember, when we say Igbos as in Southeast today, it is not what Igbos were. Igbos were originally all the slaves that came from Bight of Benin and Biafra, which makes Igbo a synonym for Negro. Many African Americans do not know this. You will see the trace of Igbo as well in Angola area. That's because that's what they called the slaves, actually. But let us move forward. He, we have seen how Biafra is everywhere. So you understand that it is still the same slave trade, the same slavery that they are doing, but subliminally. That's why you see this our brother jumping around with Wikipedia. So they go there like now. You see how they went there to say it was created in 1967. There is nothing you will say that can change it to somebody who believes in Wikipedia. And that's their game. So let us see what he's going to come up with. That is where we are most interested in. We just because they make us laugh. We wish there were people you can discuss intellectually with. You can come out with and debate. You know how interesting the American elections turn out when people come to battle intellectually. We would have loved to have them debate, but unfortunately they don't. They only understand the guns, weapons, bombs and killing. That's all. There is nothing like, oh, come, you claim we are brothers. Come, let us discuss this thing and see how we can make it work for both of us. That does not exist in their dictionary. But let us move forward. So from the same book, we see where it says, On September 1 was formed the Presbytery of Biafra, so called from the bite in which Calabar lies. 
the following is a portion of the first minute. So you can see it's September 1, 1858, Duke Town, Old Calabar. Now remember, the reason they keep telling you that, oh, Biafra started existing in 1967 is to be able to claim that the so-called South Star does not belong to Biafra. But the, the way to understand that they have some other things in mind other than just oil or anything, they just have slavery and subjugation in mind, is to remember the fact that even the path they claim is part Biafra, are not allowed to even talk about it ordinarily if they say this path is not it they will just go with that path now and then leave those they claim are part of it to go their way not not for these people because they are slave masters lackeys and stooges remember it is the same thing they are doing in ambazonia and cameroon because the slave master just passes on the weapons to them and they do the damage so technically if there is heaven or hell while they go to hell, the slave master may likely not go to hell because they are the ones kill doing the killing. Remember, the slave master just created his gun, put his bullet in it, and convinces them to come and buy at exorbitant cost because of their low level of intelligence. They will come and buy and use it to be killing their own people. So technically, the slave master has not committed any murder. So if God was or the creator of heaven and earth, was going to be sending those that committed murder to hell. The slave master had hides because he didn't kill anybody directly. He uses the fools to kill people. So you see how smart the slave master is. He doesn't do it himself. If you check the wars, it was this same Biafra war that made Steve Jobs abandon Christianity when he saw how they starved the children and he didn't understand how Christians and Muslims could have connived to do such a thing. So you see that when they work together, it is still back in Africa, those people there who lack common sense that they use to kill people while they sit back in their own comfortable houses. So you see what, what we're talking about, about humanity to others. There's a South African word called Ubuntu. You can go and research it. They say it means humanity to others or I am because we are. So those are things we look at, but unfortunately, it does not exist in the dictionary of these people. All they understand is violence, death, weapons. If they saw this now, all they are going to think about is how do we get the people behind these videos and kill them? Not even like, oh, is there something we can learn? Could it have been a mistake that we went to war killing ourselves over nothing? They don't have that type of intellect. You notice that in some places, the slave master will say, they were intelligent enough to retain something like that. That should tell you where, how written of they are. But unfortunately, they keep running to the slave master because they are just brainless. That's the best way to put it, the easiest way to put it. We don't mean this in a bad way, but if you look at the scenario, you see that things that people can discuss over coffee are things that cause wars in sub-Saharan Africa because there are people whose joy, whose life, feel good when they kill people and that's most unfortunate and the slave master knows this and he knows the people as well but let us move forward we believe our brother would have seen that wikipedia still not very good for extensive research it's just for looking up things that you want to just have an idea about but to research you have to go deeper you notice how they claim that biafra was created in 1967 they started putting up ethnic groups they do it deliberately most of them know most of them know it is the the some of other ones don't know that's the truth about it most are out of ignorance but let us see what this poster will come up with let us see where he will defend wikipedia from we can produce 100 more references if he wants but we're gonna round up here and see what he comes up with let us finally round up with the history of the effects of religion on mankind in countries ancient and modern, barbarous and civilized, edition second, etc. And it was uh, written by Reverend Edward Ryan BD and it was published around 17 something or whenever. But our interest is the content. So, from the highlighted portion, the people of Bagota offered human victims to their deities, while the natives of Biafra worshipped the devil and sacrificed children in honor of him. So, we have to again remember that they already told us that when they say devil, that they don't mean the devil that the Christians talk about, 
but that they are talking about a spirit that they don't know what to refer to it as remember the the whatever the biafrans worshipped at that time was a god that answered by fire a typical god similar to what you read about in the old testament bible that's why most of the things they call paganism are cultures in what was biafra land and you will see some books that said the things they do there were akin to mosaic laws and all that but whatever be the case we have shown our user and our brother and our friend that what they have in UKP wikipedia and incomplete and most times politically motivated and not accurate with historical facts so we look forward to his response we look forward to what he's gonna say because wikipedia is telling us that nigerian army was founded in 1960 but celebrated 150 years in 2013 the same wikipedia is telling us that biafra was created or founded in 1967 but books published as far back as 1714, 1760, 1840s had Biafra kingdoms in them. So you can't tell us that all these books that Wikipedia didn't see them, they saw them, but those are deliberate. Normally what they do is whatever they want you to believe, they go and put it there. So they will start to talking and lying about it. So when you keep reading from there only without researching, you will end up just knowing that thing that they are lying about. So anyone who comes up in the future to tell you the truth becomes an enemy to you because at that time, cognitive dissonance would have set in because it's something you have been known or you have tried, believed for a very long time. We do hope we have given you some thought-provoking issues to research on. We also do hope that we have given you ideas about what games they play. So when you see wars in Africa, especially the so-called african americans you have to look at where it is happening and who is involved remember those are where you came from what they do is they set the less intelligent non-negro groups against the negroes most times that's what happens and that's why you will not get the correct narrative from the slave masters propaganda channels and remember wikipedia we talked about yes we don't take anything away from them but the historical facts are not properly done which we have shown with two very good examples and we look forward to what our brother's response will be we thank you very much for listening we thank you for your time and we also challenge you to find time to conduct your own research we also do thank those that found time and their resources to support us we are indeed very grateful and we say a very big thank you to you peace